Hi, I'm Tony Poulos from Telecom TV, and today I'd like to deep dive into the world of cloud native telcos. And to help me out, I have with me today Calum Anderson, who is the VP and GM of Global Products and Delivery at Blue Planet, a division of Sienna. Welcome, Calum. Now let's start with the basics. What is the definition of a cloud native telco, and what capabilities are necessary for telcos to be truly cloud native? Yeah, so I think this is actually a really good starting question because there can be confusion in the market as to what what is cloud native. I look at it through three lenses, right? So the first one is how is cloud native broadly defined in the market? How is it defined in the telecom industry? And then how do I, giving my perspective, deal with it being an automation or OSS vendor? So let's look at it in the broader context. Cloud native refers to this concept of building and running applications that take advantage of distributed computing offered by cloud delivery models, right? Cloud native apps are designed with a certain set of traits in mind, right? They want to exploit the scale, elasticity, resiliency, flexibility that the cloud provides, right? If you step back and then say, well, what does this mean for a telco, right? What are key principles of cloud native in a telco world? It really is embracing software principles, microservices, not, uh, not monolithic, is standards-based, is open and programmable, can be deployed in any cloud uh, that, uh, that the telco chooses, public or private, and then leverages cloud technologies like Kubernetes. Now, if I look at it through the automation vendor lens, which is the space that I'm in, what do we mean by cloud native? It's really deployable in any, any cloud, including on-prem, and it can be consumed if deemed as a SaaS. It should be portable, meaning you can move from one cloud to another, and it should be elastic, meaning it can scale out based on capacity or demand. Why should CSPs make this transition? And how do cloud native architecture and technologies help telcos in OSS modernization? Yeah, so, so I think the first thing to debunk here is that firstly, CSPs have already made this transition to public cloud. It's well adopted in telecom. So for example, today, if you look at Blue Planet and our OSS workloads, roughly 75 to 85% of them are actually deployed on the public cloud, whether that's Amazon, Azure or GCP. So given this adoption, if telcos are really gonna get the benefits of public cloud, then they need to ensure their software stacks are built to embrace the value that cloud brings. Just doing a lift and shift of legacy OSS software to the cloud, I would say brings incremental value at best. What we wanna do is deploy a modernized software stack that's open, programmable, microservices based that can scale out on demand and be portable from one cloud to the next. That brings real value to the telco. How does it help the telco? I think two, two things it does. Uh, firstly, it reduces operational cost through simplified integration, automation via standard skill sets, embracing common CICD based models. The second one is it provides flexibility by being able to participate in a broader cloud ecosystem. Explicitly, CSPs can create and deliver innovative digital services more quickly, leveraging cloud principles. Essentially, it can accelerate their time to market. How are you seeing CSPs progress in their journey to cloud native OSS? Yeah, so I think the first thing to flag is the BSS layer, which is the layer that usually sits above OSS, transformed a few years ago. But for the OSS domain, it is still, I consider, early days, right? Um, I mentioned before, OSS workloads are deployed on the public cloud, roughly 75 to 85% of them. But the challenge is many of these workloads have just been lift and shifted, right? They're legacy systems. They haven't really embraced cloud principles, meaning they're not cloud native. I think the one area where progress has been made significantly is 5G, right? 5G sort of mandates cloud native. They sort of go hand in hand. Now it's about adapting these principles to other domains. Um, in terms of inhibitors um, to this OSS shift to cloud native, I think um, to make this transformation to cloud native work, um, you, it requires both IT and network operation skill sets. And it really requires a change in how the telco manages the application. Firstly, it needs to bring in cloud skill sets that are software centric, and then with bringing in understandings of things like microservices and Kubernetes. Uh, the second thing that's really important, as I mentioned before, this move to CICD based principles. If you're embracing cloud, but still implementing waterfall processes, then you're not really gaining the benefits that cloud can bring in terms of speed and agility. So this shift requires, I think, a relook or a reimagining of the people, the processes and the tools to truly embrace the value of cloud. And I think it's fair to say that telcos are in the middle of this journey now. They, they haven't completed it. They're sort of, sort of finding their way through it. 
Why is it imperative for CSPs to modernise their OSS now? What challenges they encounter when they embark on the modernisation journey? Yeah, th this is a really good question. Um, and let's first acknowledge <clears throat> where OSS is, right? OSS is this middle area between the BSS and the network that will enable them better to monetize their network, but also mod modernize their operating processes. So the best analogy I can use is if a telco has modernized their BSS layer, but not their OSS layer, then all really they've achieved is delivering a good experience on the front end in terms of how the customer interacts with the telco. But if the OSS isn't optimized, then those slow processes around how a service gets delivered or fulfilled, how it gets provisioned, how it gets operationalized will still exist. And that's a real problem. So if, if you draw the analogy 15 years ago, uh, telco customers were willing to wait, say, two to six months for a circuit to be delivered, right? Um, that, that doesn't cut the mustard in today's world, right? In a 5G edge IoT based world, they expect instant gratification and a service to be turned up immediately. So if your OSS can't work in real time, it can't deliver elastic based services in real time, then, and the fulfillment process is still poor and slow leading to bad customer experience, then you know, what have you done? What have you really transformed? Um, and the reality is, is that legacy OSS solutions that were customized for a particular service 15 to 20 years ago, they're outdated for this real time world, right? Um, so my view is, is that um, through this modernization, through this shift of OSS to cloud native, operational silos need to be eliminated, right? This world of spaghetti integration that has existed between the BSS, the OSS and the network domains needs to be eliminated through open digital architectures and NAS based principles. Um, and, and cloud native is really at the foundation of driving that shift. Uh, the other key piece, which you mentioned, key challenges that are encountered on this modernization journey. Um, I think the first one is taking a software first approach, right? Leveraging software and not doing things the old way, which was about delivering service toolkits and customizations, right? If you take that old paradigm, try and apply it to a cloud native world, it won't work. Those old principles are 20 years old. You need to shift to a software centric model to really embrace cloud and get that portability and scalability that comes with cloud. And most importantly, where has Blue Planet helped customers make this transition? Yeah, so, um, Firstly, Blue Planet's invested really heavily in cloud native, um, both from a vision and from a broader portfolio execution perspective, so that we can deploy on any cloud that the telco chooses, whether that's public or private. Uh, we support all flavors of Kubernetes based cloud controllers, we're microservices based, open and programmable, and we're a big proponent of open standards. So we basically have the ability to deliver a modernized OSS experience across our suite. Uh, as it relates to telco's adoption of cloud OSS systems, um, at Blue Planet, we're seeing real strengthening interest in terms of the NAS and CSPs opening up their IT stack to innovation. And we see this both in traditional wireline services, but we also see it uh, in the mobile domain also. And we believe that NAS implementations of a cloud native services management uh, layer that delivers open and standard based APIs and programmability um, and the adoption of common data models and service definitions is really where the industry is going. Uh, for us, the starting point in any type of modernization journey is inventory, right? These inventory systems have been around 20 years. And like we like to say is you can't automate what you can't see. And inventory is that starting journey, right? And a good example of where we're seeing this modernization is a customer like Lumen, as an example, who very recently has embarked on a large inventory consolidation project where they've eliminated multiple legacy inventory systems within a two year via a federated service inventory approach. That's cloud native and sits on the public cloud. We're also seeing uh, similar initiatives play out in the likes of DISH and Telefonica who are delivering modernized cloud native inventory systems as a single source of truth. I believe once you've sort of got that single source of truth layer right, um, then you can lay a cake in things like end to end orchestration via open digital architectures and NAS based principles. You can orchestrate services via a common approach, whether that's wireline, wireless, multi cloud or IoT. And that's where Blue Planet has a full suite of orchestration products spanning multi domain network orchestration cloud native orchestration and service order management. Great example here of uh, transformation that's going on in the industry is what BT is doing, implementing a common services orchestration layer across their entire stack, 
whether that's a business service or a consumer service, and really driving a common, inexper uh, a common experience and abstraction through their BSS layer into the network layer via intent. The final piece in this transformation, as I like to say, is sunsetting old or legacy services assurance systems. Um, and a lot of these systems are almost as old as the inventory systems. These legacy systems aren't cloud native. Uh, furthermore, they can't even really be lifted and shifted into the cloud either. So we're seeing the sunsetting of these services assurance systems accelerate considerably. For me, the goal in the services assurance modernization space is deliver next generation AI ops based fault performance and predictive analytics systems. Again, embracing these cloud native principles that allow the environment to scale out based on demand and allow it to be portable from one cloud to the other. My view is with that third phase, it then allows you to deliver on this end to end vision of cloud native OSS, which is really focused on delivering closed loop operation back into the network in a true declarative model. Um, I think this is where our customers want to go. This is where the vision of cloud native OSS can take you as a step function if you sort of implement it in pieces with that end state of really driving closed loop. Thanks, Caelan, for giving us the background and the insights into what it means to become a truly cloud native telco. Thank you. Thank you for your time.